pass the test because I have been trying since 12 noon to get into DDO. I finally was able to log into Solomona and I don't know how much longer I'm actually going to be able to actually be in the game because the servers are doing its mid-afternoon dump again. And I just wanted to vent a little bit about that for fellow DDO players who are going through the same thing. Now, unfortunately for me, because I do a lot of uh, remote work from home, I'm a writer, I do a lot of different writing jobs, and oh my god, why is my phone going off now? Anyhow, back to focus. The thing is, I don't like to rent much anymore. I know people who remember my days from the forums go, yeah, right, Cal, we know. You don't like to rent. And my old podcast days, yeah, I know, don't laugh. But I've become more chill. I've developed like the Hawaiian lifestyle, you know, everything's mahalo. I just want to chill, play, have fun. I don't hardcore raid much anymore, though I am playing on the hardcore server. Just to prove to myself, I'm doing extra lies with Kalari. Right now, she's a tiefling bard because those are amazing. And I just want to have fun while I'm in lockdown like everybody else. So, you know, have the extra time. I thought it was perfect. We have the hardcore server. I have my static group where we keep changing classes to keep things interesting. And just a side note about that. Please don't give me advice about my builds, and please don't tell me that doing the class completion this, blah, blah, blah. I'm doing it for fun. Some of you, I know, treat BDO like your job, more power to you. I'm playing the game for fun now, so just wanted to get that out of my system. But to go back to my rant about the game being unplayable, I don't know what happened. When Hardcore first came out, my bard, which got the first two tiers of favor that I needed to get the sash and the helm because I just wanted to get that out of the way so that whatever happened happened to my warlock which I'm slowly trying to grind out favor and reefer points with it was playable now I can't even go on Sobona and not be disconnected and I don't know what's up and I've heard that it's even worse for the low troll players so I feel bad because you know, you don't want to have nothing but time on your hands, which a lot of us who are in states that are still locked down do, and you can't play the one thing that helps you escape. And that's how DDO's been these last few days. It's completely unplayable. I jumped on Solona yesterday to get some bard stuff for this build because she's only at level 5 right now. We play once a week in our static group, and we change up classes to keep things interesting, as I said before. And so I noticed I didn't have soft soul uh, slippers in legendary or regular mode. So I jump on my ranger, who's level 30, to go get it done. And Easter Hill is already a lag city area. It is the worst. Even turning off post effect, turning everything down, which makes the graphics look like complete butt. I did it so that I could get those soft soul slippers, and I got them both. I did both Heroic Elite and then Legendary Hard, because I'm not crazy. I'm not trying to do Legendary Elite or Reaper in Easter Hill with the lag. And it stopped so many times during that end fight where all that stuff comes out at you that it was just a nightmare. And like I said, I spent the last hour just trying to get in game and i've been listening to other ddo streamers because i enjoy watching their hardcore play but i was like i want to get on and get some goals done and it's almost impossible and just trying to get into solona like i said i'm finally in you can see my tiefling dancing her little sexy heart out but it's just like i'm afraid to get stuff done and i hate that because I do have hardcore goals. I'm not trying to hit the leaderboard, sadly. I don't have the patience or the drive for that. But I do want to unlock the cosmetic stuff. Because for some reason, like, hardcore season one, I like the slash more than I like the cloak. So going for the slash and the 20, that was fine for me. This time around, I like the crown somewhat. 
but I like the cloak more than I like the sash. So I've got to get Reaper points. So I'm going to do that, hopefully. But the way the server keeps freezing and messing up, it's making it impossible for me to feel comfortable grouping A, B, even playing by myself is touch and go. I've been on hardcore off and on for the last few days, and I had a thrunnel lock up on me, which, thank goodness, I just wrote it out and didn't, like, quit the client because that could have messed me up. But it's like there's no real communication still. And I've been playing DDO for 13 years. My kid grew up with this game. And it's the same thing. Problems happen. Things aren't running the way they're supposed to. And instead of just getting it out there, hey, you guys, you know, it's going to be a while. And I know it's bad for a company to say it's going to be a while, but I think the transparency would actually help in this case to say we really are trying our best to get a hang on this, but we do not have an estimate. Don't give us that soon stuff. I remember the content drought of 2008 to 2000, almost 2010, where we got soon all the time. It became a meme. Don't tell us that you're working on something soon because people are clamoring to play because a lot of us are on lockdown and you're telling us that we'll get news about it soon. And uh -uh. especially old players like me who, you know, I did press work when the company was turbine. So I know what soon means. You can't fool me with stuff like that. It doesn't work. You know, I just want honesty. We don't know what's happening. It's not going to be said. I get that. No company wants to look incompetent. But just say, we do not have an estimate of when things are going to be back to normal. Play at your own risk, which they have been saying, but know that it's going to be like this for a while. Just give it to us straight up so that if we take the chances, it's on us. But to the people who are in the forums, and this is why I'm not in the forums anymore, it's you know, I stopped once I started doing press work for Turbine because you don't want to look bad on the company. And I tended to rant a lot. So I just to myself. And then after things, I moved on. I just didn't feel like going back. But I do read and learn. And there's so much doom and gloom posts. The game is dying. We need the merch servers. You need to do this. And everybody has these big ideas. Now, let me tell you something about big ideas and companies that they're making their money no matter what. You can scream to the wind that you know how to run Standstone better than Standstone. They're not going to listen to you. Put suggestions out there, fine. But the moment you start posting in the forums like you know how to run a multi-million dollar gaming company, if they're not laughing at you, they're just ignoring your post. So just chill on that. I love sharing ideas for updates and content. And you'll hear me in like Gothic Princess Twitch stream about ideas for gaming, playable characters and stuff. But I say this, say those things with the knowledge that Sandstone isn't just going to listen to a player like me. I can give ideas. But I never go about it like, if you listen to me, this will make you money. Because I don't know that. I'm just a player. And I want people to realize that it's not just hitting our game. It's frustrating that it is. But like I said, Lotro is feeling it just as bad too. And I won't dare tread into those forums. I already heard people screaming about lawsuits and crazy stuff like that. It is just a mess. And we gamers can be a bit passionate when it comes to the stuff we love. And we can be a bit whiny when it comes to the stuff we love. And I just want everybody to just chill out. Remember, mahalo. Just relax. The game will be here. We'll get to play it soon. I wish there was more transparency, but I know that they can only do so much. It's just really frustrating, though, and I can understand the frustration because it's like I actually have time to do this. I won't have time to play hardcore all the way up to the end, I don't think, because school is coming back in session. And with my son, we do online education now, so I have to be a teacher's aide, and I will be busy with that. And I, as much as I love gaming, 
the older I get, I've branched out to other things. And, you know, gaming isn't as high of a priority, even with, like, streaming and stuff for me, as social awareness and everything else that I've been doing with my platforms. You know, and speaking of which, shout out, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm under Kalari Gamer Chick or Tanisa the Gen X Witch. Either way, you'll find me. The thing is, I just feel like the game still being here is amazing. You know, this is the longest series outside The Legend of Zelda that I've played for this amount of time without it being like different parts of the game. And I love a lot of the new stuff. But I just feel like this data center thing is going to be rough. I've been trying to get both my son and my significant other playing. And I can't introduce them to a game where they can't even sign in. You know? So I really hope things get better soon. I'm looking forward to getting some more of those cosmetic things before Hardcore is over with. And I'm hoping I can get some more playtime before the end of August because that's when school's back in session and I probably won't be able to play more than once a week with my static group and it's gonna suck I just there's so much I wanted to do this summer with the gaming since like most of the same U.S. I'm doing the social distancing and avoiding human contact that I don't know as much as possible so I, I don't know I'm just spitballing here because like I said I really want to play the game I am enjoying the bard I'll show you some of the stuff on her actual bar this fiendish archipelago arpeggio is so I almost call it archipelago what the heck English anyhow this fiendish arpeggio is amazing and I've been using it on hardcore with my Bar Warlock Rogue Slash. Now, Kalari's not doing the Rogue stuff. I just want to go straight caster with her, so I am doing the Bar Warlock Bean Splash. It is so much fun. And towards Endgame, like I have with Melodica on um, Hardcore, she's going to have Fire Breath. I was testing that out on Hardcore in the Necropolis last night. I'm, I'm telling you. It is a fun build. And I know people always go to older players who are up there in levels about build advice. I can't give that. That's the one thing I stress. I don't tell people how to build for DDO because it's about your play style. I don't believe in perfect builds. Some people are like, oh, make a bear tank and you'll crush hardcore. Or make a inquisitive and you'll do great or... But that's what works for them. They will learn the ins and outs of a class. And that's how they play. But I feel like a new player will not understand that that person will crunch those numbers. Will look at every individual enhancement and know what works for them. And what works for me with casters is I am passionate about that. Way more than I am with melee builds. And I do learn what works for me. So when people ask me, how do I make it all hardcore with my elves or tiefling bards and stuff like that, I tell them, I learned what works for me and my play style. And that's how you'll succeed at hardcore. And no matter what, because I know you'll see a lot of these really great streamers that get through content like No Tomorrow without them really explaining that they have learned what works for them and that they can tell you all the time what works for them and think it works for you, but it might not because not a lot of people are that technical. They just want to play. And when you have that mentality, you end up dead on, on, on hardcore surfer, because like I said, you can gear yourself out, give yourself a ton of hit points and even evasion, and then make some stupid move because you weren't being cautious. You weren't being careful. And some people are using the server as a learning server, which, wow, more power to them. But that couldn't be me. I, for real, feel like if you're going to play on hardcore, you should have a little bit more basics. Like, 
I don't care how many lives. This is like Kalari's 10th life. I never go without curse pots. I never go without poison neutralization. I got to get some restore pots. I thought I had those. I carry those even though she has tons of plat and spent a bunch of after shards doing re-rolls the other day. So I don't have a lot of that right now, but I have a bunch of DDO points too. You know, I, I'm an old player, so I can't give you a new player's perspective. I'm not going to fake that funk. But I do say that even as an old player who probably doesn't need those things, if you're not covering the basics with your build, then you are going to die on hardcore. It's as simple as that. And you can save up a few gold. You don't have to have 99 cluster removal pots, but have at least a couple on hand. Especially in the harbor where the cobalt shamans love to curse you. And there are traps that spew poison. These are just basic common sense things that will get you not only through the harbor but high level stuff. Like the reason I splashed Warlock with my bard build. And I learned this on Hardcore. Is because the Warlock enhancements for um, Enlightened Spirit, which you see over here has a built-in shield clicky. It costs two action points. I'm not going to go too heavy in this tree, but I'm going to take the shield enhancement because it's a permanent shield blocker, which helped me through Ravenloft. And then I get a resist energies, which I'm definitely going to get. It's not that high of a point investment. And it won't take too much away from both my theme stuff for the Tiefling Scoundrel or the spell singer, you know, and Kalari won't be spread as thin because I'm going to do a bit of Tainted Scholar for extra hit points, and I'm going to do Soul Eater because I don't care what people say, the consume and um, stricken buffs help so much when whittling down heavy HP enemies, and so many people ignore these two Dots. I love dots. Dots are my jam. But, you know, she won't be as spread thin as the build I have on Hardcore because I don't have road legend foes. I don't need them. We play in a group with somebody who handles that aspect. So even though I'll have high reflex save from all the lives that I've been doing, I won't have to worry about traps or avoiding such things. So... I don't have as much of a split. I'll be focused completely on Bard, Tiefling, and um, a little bit of Warlock enhancements here and there that'll help defend and protect me more. And I learned a lot of this on Hardcore, which kind of contradicts my whole teaching thing, but still. I think the reason why I was able to get to level 22 on my tiefling bard on hardcore was because I'm willing to stop, say, hey, I've played Warlock, and I remember this stuff. Let's see if it works for this build, and it did. And then I maxed out Epic Destinies. I don't want to load it on Kalari, because she's only level 5, and then I'll keep getting that weird message that I'm not high enough level to do Epic Destinies, but I've completely ETR'd so much that most of my epic destinies are capped out. And you can see by some of the stuff that I have on the bar here. And that's just the stuff that I wanted on here because sometimes it's switching around. And I have, you know, Colors of the Queen, um, Energy Criticals, Fortification, stuff like that. Um, I have it built to where I breathe fire on Hardcore and I didn't change up my Sork uh, Epic Destiny before I tr Larry now. So I'll have to do that at level 20. But it's just the stuff that I'm learning with Melodica on Hardcore that makes me amp to play this girl. And I feel like Hardcore can be a teaching server to people who have the basics. But if you don't know that traps can kill you, maybe chill with the Hardcore play or take your time. Because you're going to probably die a lot. I'm just saying. But I'm meandering at this point, And I'm supposed to be helping Axiom with his stream. I just wanted to vent. Because I was supposed to be helping him with his stream. And actually playing 
DDO and I'm kind of frustrated right now. I want to see if anybody's on, too. I think I'm the only one in Guild on right now. Yep. And let's see what's going on with the LFMs, because I'm not going to group or anything, but yeah, LFMs will look as sparse, because it is getting to that time in the afternoon where everybody's going to either really freeze or get kicked off. And I really want to go play my cold lock on hardcore instead of being on here dancing. So I might just take the time and do that. I don't know. Let's see what the daily dice have to say about my luck today. Come on, give me something good. Huh. It could go either way, I guess. Death Ward, perfect. All right, y'all. I'm going to wrap this up. I think the test stream is going well. I can see my character doing her little salsa dance. I can hear my mic clearly. And hopefully I will be streaming more gaming content soon. But like I said, this lags up DDO for me. So I'm not trying to do that during my hardcore stream. But you might see me later on tonight on a friend stream doing my thing with her. And it'll be nice. It'll be fun. Um... Thank you for tuning in, those of you watching, and I will see you all soon.